Hi everyone, <clears throat> welcome back. Sorry for the abrupt ending of the last video. Um, I kind of realized that I, we are going to need to do a little bit of refactoring before we move forward in um, passing the image URLs into these, into the source for the image tag. So to start with, we're we were talking about how we need to have this image, and we were looking at how our um, images were looking. Oops, we were how our images were looking. So this is where we're at right now, and um, so first of all, what we're going to do is this name is no longer accurate. It says add names to HTML. Well, that's not what we're doing anymore. We're adding a div and we're going to be adding images so it's not just names anymore. So we are going to be renaming this to just call it display Pokemon list. So if I just do a sh I, I found the, the shortcut. If I if I want to rename something I can click on this make sure my cursor is blinking on that word that I want to uh, on the the name of the thing you want to rename and in this case you can rename either a function or a variable. I just hit F2 and that lets, gives me this window and I can just change this to display Pokemon list. Hit enter and now it changed it both here and here where it's being called. This is the function signature and this is the function call and the function call is passing data straight into this and that's fine and we are going to say from here though we are going to want to create before we start anything else we are going to want to we have this Pokemon list that's being passed into the HTML we are going to actually extract this Pokemon.results and actually we're going to change the name of this first we're going to call this Pokemon HTML list and so F2, Pokemon HTML list. Normally I would capitalize HTML, but I, I don't want to get confusion so where the L, what, what, where list starts. So what we're going to want to do is we're want, going to want to highlight this entire block of code. Well, before we do that, though, we want to grab this guy right here highlight this guy and we're going to use our extract uh, variable I figured out how to do this it's control shift R uh, in Mac it might be something different but we want to extract to constant in enclosing scope that's the right one the first option here so this right here says extract to constant in clo enclosing scope so let's go ahead and click that and we want to rename this to po Pokemon list so now, this is mapping through the Pokemon list. Data.results is kind of hard to understand or remember what that's referring to. And we just named it something that's more clear of what that actually is. Data.results, if you remember, is in the um, HTML of the Pokemon is where all the list of Pokemon are. And it has a list of their names and the URLs that we were looking at um, and we had started logging in the last, uh, so Pokemon URL is Pokemon.URL and Pokemon.name because we're referencing a field and an object, Pokemon object, that, or well, an object that we named Pokemon, and the uh, that represents the each Pokemon and with a name and a URL. It gives more data to them. And we, we've been logging these URLs, as you can see, um, one, two, three, you know, and the names of each of them. So what we are going to, in fact, I'm going to stop logging this name with div tag. This isn't really helping us at this point. So, and we could potentially stop logging the Pokemon URL because it's not actually helping us at the moment. And we're not really going to care about that going forward. We're going to extract all of this 
actually, before we do that, we're going to, yeah, we're going to extract this into a function. This function right here, all of this, all the way to the end of this Poke, display Pokemon list into a function. And to extract a function is also control shift R. So control shift R, extract to function in global scope. So I'm going to go to the second one. And we're going to name this one uh, build HT, HTML. And now we've got another function. And this is building all the HTML. And it's building it from the Pokemon list. So the thing is, we want to change this list to be a different type of list. In that we want to actually transform this and we want to have instead of the urls of each of the pokemon that gives it all the different data we just want to have the url that gives the image because that's all we care about so what we're going to do is that we're going to do a map of that so right now i'm going to create another so i'm going to change yeah so we're going to create another variable const pokemon list with with images and we're going to say pokemon list dot map and inside of here we're going to say for each pokemon and then fat arrow and then open and close so we give an arrow function inside the map is the one parameter that a map function when we're calling the map function it takes in one parameter and that parameter is this entire thing here which is basically a function. If you look at it, the signature of this, is it not gonna give the signature of me? Oh, that's weird. It thinks it's an any. Um, okay, so if, um, but anyway, so, so, but just take my word for it. Pokemon is, list is a list, and that um, when you call dot map, it's a function that takes just one parameter, and that's a function. So, <clears throat> We are going to have to make a get call to start getting each of these images. So what we want to do is first, we're going to start with a, we talked about the two different types of variables. There's const and there's let. Pokemon image list. Now I'm inside of this function. I could name this the same as this, but I don't want to do that because it's just going to confuse things. I want to just have this equal an empty list for now. And so what we need to do is for this is a, this is a for loop. Now we talked about uh, for each against the list. We're going to do a for loop. And this is a, a, a one of the other major functions or, or types of syntax in coding languages in all languages is a for loop. And what it does is it takes a, a list of things or something that like you can do either like for every number and from one to 100, do this and stop whenever the number exceeds 100 uh, and each time increment the number or you can do it in a list of items. So for every item in a list, or you can do it for every field in an object, there's different ways that you can do for loops. We're going to do a, a for loop for every item in the Pokemon list. So we're going to say for Pokemon, actually, yeah, you know what I'm realizing? We're not going to use them. This is not a map. Undo. We are going to start with the let Pokemon image list equals empty list. And then we're going to do the for loop because the for loop is instead of the map. So we are going to go through Pokemon of Poke, oops, Pokemon list. And hit tab to autocomplete and then at the end, so this is similar to an if statement where it would say if, and then parentheses, you would have a Boolean statement, and then after that, you have curly brackets that represent the block of code if that thing is true that should be executed. 
but this is a for loop. So this is for, and what's inside of here is not a Boolean list, but it's actually the syntax that shows what type of for loop it is. So when we say Pokemon of Pokemon list, the of keyword is very important. And what that means is that we're going to take this Pokemon list and we're going to, for every item in that list, we're going to do whatever's in this block of code. So inside of here, I can reference Pokemon and it will recognize the first Pokemon and the second Pokemon and the third Pokemon. This block of code will run for every Pokemon in that list. So now I'm going to say uh, const Pokemon. I'm going to just call it reference because we're referencing um, a Pokemon and we're going to just say name, col name colon. We're going to create an object here. I'm going to say Pokemon dot name and we're going to say comma image is and we're going to put an empty list or empty string there for now so this is the object that we're going to create so we are then going to say well okay so for now we need to actually start making that network call so let's do await. What await does is the difference between a network call and most other lines of code in your code base is going is that a network call is what they call asynchronous. In other words, you you send the message out and then you have to wait for it to come back because it takes sometimes up to a second, usually half a second or a third or a fourth of a second to come back um, but it takes it takes a little bit more time as opposed to just uh, a hundredth of a second for it to execute this line and this line and 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 build the, all the HTML is very very fast and <clears throat> we are doing a get call because we are going to call that URL and so we're going to do a get with that Pokemon dot URL. So now we're pull, call, referencing the URL out of that Pokemon object that we have right here. And we are going to do a get on that. And then we are going to pass in a um, function. So this one's going to have two parameters. Because there's two parameters, we're going to use parentheses. You, you can sometimes you can use parentheses and not use parentheses. But when you have two, you're going to have to use parentheses. If you have one, I should say, if you have one variable, you don't have to use parentheses. If you have zero variables, you need to use parentheses. And if you have more than one, you have to use parentheses to represent the beginning of, a, uh, of an arrow function. But this is going to be an arrow function in curly brackets. But the second parameter is status. And if you remember before, this looks very similar to the other network call we did. So we if <coughs> status equal uh, triple equals and then quotes success so we're saying if the status is success and this is an if statement we have the curly brackets we have the boolean check inside of the uh, parentheses and then we have the uh, so if this is true then this block of code that's represent that's surrounded by these two curly brackets and you can see that where when I select this one this one is highlighted too with a little box around it that can help you understand which curly bracket is associated is a closing bracket for this opening bracket. So <clears throat> you always have to have a closing curly bracket for every opening bracket. So this curly bracket here is inside the for loop that we're creating. <clears throat> the next next curly bracket we see is right here. This is the object it represents something a little bit different. And here, and then we say await oh, get right now this curly bracket is representing the what's in the function body that's represented by this whole function right here which is the parameters and then the arrow that represents it's a function and the block of code that is uh, executed when the data is 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 retrieved so and then we have a closing parenthesis we have the semicolon at the end of that because this is the end of a function call the get function call so you see this parenthesis it highlights the end of that too it's really good if you get stuck to to help you kind of see where things are being and if you forget to put a closing bracket somewhere you're going to be in a broken state 
And using this can sometimes help you identify where that where you missed something, which is fairly common for coders to do. So, all right, but we're inside the if statement. So if the status is successful, then we want to say Pokemon reference dot image equals and we are going to reference the image URL from the data. So data dot, so if we look back at our, um, all right. so if we look back at our data, oh, there it is. All right, this is what our data looks like. It's really big, and there's a ton of stuff in here. I mean, I, I wouldn't even want to count the lines on this. It's probably in the tens of thousands, but or at least in the thousands. But um, so we don't want abilities, we don't want forms, we don't want game indices, we don't want moves. What we want is sprites. So it's going to be the first dot is sprites. So data dot sprites. Data dot sprites dot. <clears throat> okay, so actually what we can do, this might actually be helpful. Before we pass this to an image, let's start logging this. We're eventually going to pass in the Pokemon image list, or we should probably change this to Pokemon list with images. with images. So what we're going to say is we are going to eventually pass in the Pokemon list with images into the build HTML. And this, the name is going to work the same, but then we're going to be able to just say dot image and it will grab the image URL out of there. But for now, just for the sake of helping you to see kind of getting a little bit of feedback to see where we're at right now. So what we say, if the status is success, the other thing we do is um, if the um, <clears throat> if it's not success, we can say oh, we can just log for now. Else log. Oops. Console dot log. Um, failed to retrieve image for and then comma pokemon dot name so if it fails then we'll know which one it failed on and um, since we're right here we have the scope of pokemon even though we're in here as well because if you're inside of this bracket we have this brackets closing here, so it's wrapped all the way around. This all this is here is inside of the scope, and you can reference this variable, or this. Yeah, I guess it's a variable. It's a type of variable. Um, so, what we want to do is. Oh, this is this is actually giving me a red line because I need to async make this an async function. So to make this an async function, we need to put that right inside of the dot. Yeah, that's no, we could put that inside of here. This would be function. Is it async function or async? Async function. Now it's happy. So what we're going to do is we're going to log uh, the data dot sprites. So and we'll take this step by step. Uh, console dot log. Come on. Console dot log. And we're going to say, oh, come on. There you go. And we're going to say. Uh, Pokemon data and this is going to be big so we're going to 
just say data dot sprites actually do a json stringify json dot stringify which takes a json object because the stuff that comes from the network is is in json format and it would it, it, it turns the whole thing into a string so data dot sprites and we are going to display that so all right so let's hit save everything should still be compiling unless i messed up here but let's let's go ahead and look at this then let's go back to here refresh oh what's just happening here okay All right, let's close that okay let's go ahead and hit this play button again here we go pick me inspect what happened okay there it is so this is happening we're getting all this data for every one of the Pokemon it's taking a long time because we're making a network call inside of every other network call so we're making one network call for all of them then inside of each one we're making a network call so it's slower to load than it was before but as you can see our Pokemon data has the first field is back default let's look at our other data object inside sprites the first field is back default so we know that we're inside sprites so very cool so now let's go to the down one more let's go down the next step and let's go down and um, there we go right here uh, data sprites what was the next thing we wanted to look at we wanted to do data sprites dot not other dot versions right because we want to go into versions and we look at generation five so let's go back into version let's go back here so data dot sprites dot version so now we're referencing the sprites field in the data object and that returns another object as the sprites object we'll call it and then we're referencing the, the version field in the sprites object so sprites is an object and we're referencing representing the versions field there Oh, versions, plural. If I didn't do plural, that wouldn't have worked. But versions, and now sprites, versions, and so let's um, see what that looks like. So hit save. Let's go back to here. Oh, let's go back to here and hit refresh. All right, so now we've got the, uh, right, let's click this again. So now this time, the data starts with generation i roman numeral one well if we look at our this one if you inside versions the first field is generation i or generation one so that's perfect so that we're we're right on track so we want to go down to generation five so let's go ahead and do generation five now versions dot generation dash v for five so now save let's go let's go back to this one refresh click me uh oh there's a reference v is not defined error so something is not correct about this well the problem that we just account encountered was the limitation one of the limitations of using the dot notation to reference an item uh, a field in a object you can't see this didn't take it to be re generation dash v for generation five it doesn't accept the dash as a thing it, it rejects that entirely it what this is saying then that we're trying to subtract this object from a variable v and it's saying there's no variable named v that's defined so v is not defined means you don't have a variable named v so what we have to do to fix this is a new another way of referencing objects and we had touched on this at one point but now i have to delete the uh, spaces on either side of this because the code formatter did that but so now if i hit save oh come on is that going to do that oh no i got to put this in quotes that's why so i need to put quotes on this side 
quotes on this side, because when you do this uh, square bracket way of referencing a field in versions in an object, you have to put that as a string inside of there. So now if I hit save, now it's fine. It recognizes generation V as a string and it can find this. So now let's go ahead and find this. Go back here, refresh, click me, and we're happy again. And now, as you can see, we're starting to see URLs to actual um, images here. So now we're one step away from getting, or, or just very close to getting our image. So the next one, let's go back to our data. So we had generation five, and then it was black dash white. Well, because we've got a hyphen in this uh, field two, we're going to have to reference it the same way. So let's go back to here. So the way we reference the generation five object off of another one, we just do another square bracket right after this square bracket. It looks a little bit weird, but I'm going to go ahead and paste that black dash white name in there. And so now if I hit save, if we look at this black dash white, is going to have the field animated if we did it right. So we should see the word animated as soon as we run. So if we hit save and command us save, and then we go back to our website and hit refresh, and hit click me. So now you can see the very first field is showing as animated. So our data, we've, we've driven, drilled down this far. So the reason why I'm taking small steps here is because this could be really complicated if you don't. So we're taking a very big problem, how to drill all the way down to this data, and we're breaking it into small pieces and validating along the way. Later we'll use unit tests for this, but right now we're doing it by using a log. Uh, that's, and that's useful for us for our purposes right now. So the next one is just animated. So animated doesn't have any hyphens in it, so we can reference it with just a dot. So, oops, uh, right here. So, so if we now do dot animated, now if we log that, let's see, I hit save, command S to save, and let's go here, refresh, click me. All right, so now we're getting back something that says back underscore default. Is that what we wanted to see? Yep, that's the first field. Black underscore default is the first field inside of animated. Well, we are one step away from getting the image. Next we want front underscore default. So I'm going to copy this, go back to our code base. So I'm going to try a dot again, see if that works with underscores. It might work with underscores. So let's go back and save that. Now let's go and look and see what it does. If this passes, it'll look like a bunch of gibberish here. I don't think it'll show an image. Oh no, it, it'll show a URL. That's right, I forgot. So this is going to be just URL if it works. So if we hit refresh and we hit click me, there we go. All of our URLs and you see there's a dot gif. These are that's a that's a file extension that means it's a moving image, a image that moves just a little bit. It has like, I don't know, five to ten frames, sometimes less, that um it just moves between a few different images. It makes it look like it's animated. So there we are. So we've got all of our Pokemon data URLs. So now that we have our Pokemon data URLs, what we want to do is we want to extract this into a function. Well, let's go ahead and copy this. Let, let's first extract it to a variable because a variable would be helpful. Put a semicolon at the end of this. This goes away delete that. So, well, actually, we're fine. What we can do is we'll just copy this. So we know this is our precious path to get to our image that we want. So we are logging that. That's a big console log block of code there. But what we're going to do is we're going to just, oops, no, we're not inside. We're not outside of it yet. This is where it helps to have this highlighting thing. This is the opening parenthesis. This is the closing parenthesis of the console log. Console is an object log is a function and this is the parenthesis after it is calling that function so if i do const uh uh pokemon image 
equals, and then I'm going to copy this to the command C. So I've got a Mac, command V. So I'm going to just if I delete that. Does that? I'm just going to have that all connected and see if I put a semicolon there. If I hit save, is that going to move it down again? It is going to move it down. Okay. Well, I tried. So the, we've got the Pokemon image URL right here. So, in fact, we can call this Pokemon image URL. So, now we just want to pass this Pokemon image URL into this image field in this Pokemon reference object. So, we can actually get rid of this log for now. It was helpful. But we know that we have the image there now. And so what we want to do, we're going to get rid of this because we're that was the beginning of, of what we were doing before. But now we have the Pokemon image URL, and we are going to reference Pokemon reference And we are going to push that object that has the Pokemon name already added to it here. So we are going to set that onto the Pokemon reference because we're already inside of this for loop. So this for loop now is we're going to say um, Pokemon reference. And we're going to say dot image. And we're going to say this equals Pokemon image URL. And so now if I hit save, our, thanks to our plugins, we extensions we added, it's automatically moving things or spacing them out in the right way. So now what we're doing is that this Pokemon reference object has been given a name and the image has been assigned down here. Now what we want to do is do Pokemon list with images, this list that we created way up here. We want to add this to that list. And the way you add an item to a list is you Poke... I just realized that's called... spelled pokemon -y. Pokemon. So I'm just going to go ahead and highlight this and copy it. So Control-C, Command-C, and Command-V. And we're going to say, we're going to reference that list, and we're going to say dot push. And this is how you add an item to a list. And we're going to say Pokemon reference. Because it's referring, ref, referencing the, uh, the Pokemon. It's, it's the data about the Pokemon that has the image and name. So that is now going to be... created and added to this for every single one of these. And now what we need to do is pass Pokemon list with images here. And we have the images inside of the HTML. So I hit save. So let's go ahead and run this again. Uh, if we go here, no, this one. So if you run this again, we won't see the logs anymore because I got rid of that. But everything else seems to be working. So that's good. There's not getting any console logs, any errors. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean anything, everything's okay, but it means that so far it looks like things are working. Oh, what we can do actually, let's log the Pokemon reference. Yeah. So console.log. Pokemon reference. I think that'll work. Let's see. It might, I might need to do a JSON.stringify, but let's see if it works. It, sometimes it works at the top level. So if we go back to here and hit refresh, click me. There they are. 
the name and the image URLs for each of them. And that's what we really need to go to the next step. So what we've done is quite a bit of code here to get this Pokemon list with images. So let's go ahead and highlight all of this code and do a extract function with control shift R. And we're going to extract to function in global scope. And we're going to say um, get or retrieve Pokemon images. So this, all this does, this entire function is now an async function, but this this function here is retrieving the Pokemon limit image, it, uh, Pokemon images, and so and it also added an await right here, which is great because we need an await for that to wait for all of this to be done before it goes to this line. Otherwise, we'll build HTML without tags again. So, well, let's let's go ahead and uh, now go into our build HTML function, and where you can navigate into a function is you hold the command, and if you see, whenever I, I have the command held down and I hover over this, it has an underline on it, uh, and a little thing pops up here. So you can use that to navigate into functions and out of functions. So I want to go inside the build HTML function, so I hover over it and I left click with my mouse. And that takes me to the signature of the build HTML function. It's taking in this Pokemon list. That it's named the same thing. It doesn't matter that we change what we passed into it because it still has a dot name. So the dot name is still valid, and we're not trying to reference that URL anymore, but we're going to say, instead of source, instead of empty string here, we're going to say Pokemon.image, because that's the name that we gave that second field. So now if hit save, let's go back to our website and hit refresh quickly. And there we go. We've got images. Just like that. Moving images. From here, I leave it to you. You can start fiddling with the styles, make it different colors, make them different ways, go in there and get different images by using the same method I just showed you to pull out whatever image you would like. And um, set it to that object and uh, we are um, but I'm going to at this point let you leave it to your own imagination if you want to try to figure out how to make them fight use these buttons you can set attribute with the button um, down here where we build the button you can do a it's called title right now but it's a title button and you can say, you know, title dot button. I'm sorry, title, title, sorry, title. There you go. Dot set attribute, and then you can set, on, uh, put in quotes, on press. So over here, remember we have the button object or the button tag. We have oh, it's on click, all lowercase on click. It looks like that. So you have to do that, um, and so if you call this on click like that, v, uh, it's all lowercase. That's the name of that attribute, and the and the value of this is not a string, but is actually the uh, the on press function. So you would actually do a lambda function inside of here, open close parentheses, and then an arrow, and then this, and you could start doing whatever you want inside of here to click that button. You can make another network call and, and retrieve attributes and show a different page, different things like that. So <clears throat> I leave that to your imagination, what you want to do with this. But there is the list of Pokemon images that we had wanted to show. So we are, are still not using ClickMe, so you could actually pass in a, uh, a name and that could give you something else. Uh, if you find that, you know, Pokemon in the list. But there's a lot of different ways to, to go about um, if you want to continue playing with this. But that's the basic view, overview of a lot of the JavaScript functions, a lot of the JavaScript uh, uh, mechanisms. And there's a ways to break this into even smaller functions. 
if you wanted to say, I want to sit, group all the div creation stuff, well, the div creation includes adding, appending the images, so that wouldn't be that useful. But if you were to say, I want to extract out the image, let's say this. So command uh, shift, control shift R, and I can extract to function global scope, and I can say build image tag. And now this build image tag has created that image, set the source to it, added the Pokemon image to it, set the attribute to it with the styles, and now this is all contained inside this function. And that's a great way of being able to construct your code in such a way you can see what's happening without having to read, especially whenever you're still learning how to read code. And so now you can just say the image, you're building the image tag, and we're passing the image tag into this append, into the Pokemon container. And so this right here is also building the button tag and setting an attribute, and then we're adding a name to it, and then we're adding the title, the button. You could call it a title button, but and I, if remember F2 changes name, so if I call it title button, now you can say extract all of this into a function of build button. So control shift R and to function in global scope, build button tag. So now you've made this a little bit cleaner, easier to read, easier to remember what's going on here. And if you want to go inside there, you can just look inside there. Oh, this is how I'm building the button tag. And so, oops. Oh, okay. So, so there we go. So good luck and have fun. Thanks for watching.